are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Recent IELTS speaking questions. In this tutorial, we are going to look at some recent questions and then a few sample answers. And during the tutorial, I will break down some of my answers and I will explain some useful components or techniques that you can use, that I used in my answers and that you can use in your answers. So hello there, my name is Ben Worthington and I've been doing these IELTS podcasts for, I don't know, about five years now, more or less. And as you probably know, I'm from England, but I left England to do my Erasmus, which is like a student exchange. And I did it in Spain, which was amazing. Spain is a fantastic place. Love that country. And I started teaching English there once I finished. And first I was teaching kids, then I was teaching adults, and then I was teaching students, and then I stumbled across IELTS. And I was like, ooh, this is interesting. And what made it interesting for me was that it's all results-based, that I could, I don't know, teach certain techniques and the students would improve their score. However, if I taught a different way, sometimes the students wouldn't improve. So having this feedback loop of what worked and what didn't work, I could really start improving. Because as you know, with IELTS, you get your grade. And if my students were taking tests, I couldn't tell if they were improving or not. So this is why I decided to specialize in the IELTS. But how did I get good at teaching IELTS? Well, I basically set up IELTS podcast to interview experts. And then I took what they taught or what they shared, tested it on my students. And if it worked, I put it into my online course. If it didn't work, I left it. And that's why I was able to build the course, jump to band seven or it's free. So have a look at that if you are struggling with the IELTS exam. Let's have a look at some recent part one questions. Now we all know in the IELTS test, it's three parts. Part one is the warm-up session, part two, the cue card session, and part three is when it gets juicy, we could say, is when it starts to get a little bit more challenging. However, we're going to just focus on part one, and if you think part one is too easy, fine, no worries. Um, However, I would recommend you stay listening and you can use some useful techniques. So let's jump into it. These are recent speaking part one questions seen by our students and sent in to us and seen around the web as well. And just before we jump into this, remember part one questions are to set the tone are to get you uh, relaxed. This is your time. This is your test. You've paid for this. And the idea of part one is to get you settled in because when you're settled in and relaxed, that's when you're going to speak your best English. If it was just a quick three minute questions back and forth and that determined your IELTS speaking, it wouldn't be that fair because you'd probably be nervous and you wouldn't give the most accurate or the most, um, yeah, you wouldn't give the, an accurate show of your language ability. So this is why we have part one, to make the student a little bit more relaxed so that we can get a more truthful and accurate and fair idea of your speaking ability. So let's jump into it. Questions about accommodation. Do you live in a house or an apartment? Now immediately I picture where I live. And then this gives me a whole um, paragraph after paragraph after paragraph. It gives me a whole story to tell. I'm picturing the street entrance. I'm picturing the steps past the letterboxes, then the lift, picturing some of the people there. And I can just start there. So here is the technique. Picture where you live and then uh, even picture the journey if you can. And you'll just have so much to speak about. Now, if your mind goes blank, then 
again use this technique and if you're still struggling just start off slowly and then you can slowly pick up afterwards so oh, an, an example of starting slowly would just be to repeat the question back in the answer form like a parrot but don't worry it's the first words of the test so do you live in a house or an apartment i live in a flat and that i've got started i've got rolling and from there i can build on that so here would be my answer i live in a flat it's actually in the city center so it can be a little bit noisy uh, i've lived there for about a year and i don't think it's that bad we're probably going to stay there a little bit longer so i've i've added my opinion i've added the location i mean as i said before my mind was exploding with different ideas that i could say but i just gave about three sentences this is not part three um, and I'm just going to develop, I'm not even going to develop it, just the, the shortest of answers and moving on to the next one. What do you like about living there? Well, to be honest, it's pretty central and during the lockdown period it was really quiet, which I enjoyed, but now lockdown restrictions have been relaxed and it's back to being noisy but however um i think what i like about it the most is that it's near the shops and the supermarkets there we go i could feel myself answering the wrong question there talking about what i disliked um i give a little anecdote also i gave uh, i used a little filler which is well to be honest and that's perfectly okay. I just needed to collect my thoughts. Next question. Which is your favorite room in your home and why? Well, I think now my favorite room in the, in the house is probably the living room, but because I've made a little stoop, I've made a little nook, where I could put my bean bag in front of the heater, sit down with my book and read, and it's really cozy. There we go. Straightforward. Um, I told a little story, um, and it, yeah, it's uh, don't overcomplicate this. Um, just try and answer the question and then develop it a little bit. You know, we we are not robots. We're not going to say my favorite room is the bathroom because you know, I, my favorite room is the bathroom. That's it. No, that's not the best answer. My favorite room in the home is probably, and we can introduce an adverb there, is probably the bathroom because I can take long, hot showers, which are great after a full day of playing football or running. Again, just a straight answer. And they're probably going to get a little bit more difficult. Not a little bit more difficult, but a little bit deeper as we go along. So we start off with, do you live in a house in an apartment? And then by the end, we have what sort of accommodation would you most like to live in? So we're getting easier. And then, sorry, we start off easy and it gets slightly more difficult. Next ones questions about fashion or clothing so are clothes important to you well to be honest i've never really thought about it however i guess i'd say they are semi-important uh, i have a few favorite items of clothing but i wouldn't say it's incredibly important there we go honest answer Again, using the same filler and building on it a little bit. Well, to be honest, I've never really thought about it. And yeah, to be honest, it was a little bit of a tricky question. I don't really think about clothes that much. <laughs> Next question. What kind of clothes do you usually wear? Nowadays, where I live, 
we are in lockdown quite a lot so i guess i'm wearing casual clothes like my um sports sports clothes because it's loose and it's easy to wear and plus when i sit down i don't have to adjust it at all because it's all elastic there we go that might sound as though i'm quite fat <laughs> it doesn't really matter but I just gave a reason. I just developed it. I said it's comfortable. I wasn't going to go into talk about jeans because about jeans being not that comfy. This is part one. A few sentences will suffice. What kind of clothes do you never wear? Well, I cannot say I have a specific type of clothing that I really dislike. However, because we're in winter at the moment, it's been a long time since I've worn any shorts or since I've used my flip-flops. So I guess it depends on the seasons. There we go. And quite honestly, I could not think of any clothes that I never wear or that I dislike. So I just turned it into you know, a logical answer about the seasons and about summer clothes and shorts and flip-flops. And that's fine. That's fine. This is not a test of my intelligence. I'm not going to be interviewed by Giorgio Armani. I'm just going, to, I just need to talk. That's it. Confidently and clearly. This is another uh, good piece of advice, actually. If you do find you have an explosion of ideas, then slow down and drip out each idea slowly and carefully. And you'll probably find that as you share one idea, that the other ideas suddenly seem not that important and you can just carry on with your original idea as well. But the key to getting started is to start off slow and simple and then get momentum. Like, imagine we are pushing a massive boulder. It's going to take a lot of effort to get started. So let's get started with a small step, and then once we get moving, we can elaborate. Next, next question. Do you ever wear the traditional clothes of your country? I, I'm struggling to think what the traditional clothes of my country are. I guess being English, we could say it's the Morris dancers. I know that in some countries they have this folklore dress, especially in Eastern Europe and possibly in Spain, it could be some flamenco clothing. But to be honest, um, I'm not so sure what the traditional clothing of England is. So I can't really answer that question. There we go. That's an honest answer. I cannot honestly think off the top of my head what the traditional clothes of England are. Maybe it's a suit and a bowler's hat, but that's the recent past. Uh, so it's a bit of a tricky one there. So I just kind of dive. I told him, I told the examiner, I don't really know what the traditional clothes of England are. However, I know that in some countries it's maybe folklorish and in other countries it's maybe flamenco, as I said. I don't know if that's true either. However, as I said a few minutes ago, this is not a test on clothing. This is a test on communication and language. Right, moving on. Questions about career or education. Again, this is really easy. This is one of the most common questions you're going to be asked. Do you work or are you a student? Now, Really, we cannot be struggling on these easy questions. And how do we ensure 100% that we are not going to struggle? Well, we, be, we get familiar with where we are from and how to explain it. For example, I'm, even though I'm from Huddersfield, which is a small town, abroad, outside of England, I'll say I'm from near Manchester because everybody knows Manchester and also, you know, when I was teaching English uh, in the class, I would tell my students I was from Manchester, and now we can talk about Manchester. I can say it's an industrial city, or it was an industrial city. I can say that the weather there is horrendous. 
it's just gray i can say there's a few famous football clubs so anyway i'm going a bit off topic so the point i want to make is that if i get the question do i do you work or are you a student i'm going to say well i work in education i've worked um for the last 10 years t as an english tutor and i really enjoy it because i like to see progress and i like results you see if i was a student and say okay um well i'm a student at the moment so i'm studying geography and history these are my favorite subjects and we have some amazing lecturers at the moment what i'm saying is do some research research your line of work um, ask yourself why you enjoy it ask yourself why you enjoy being a student ask why you became a student what are you studying learn how to talk about yourself your interests your work your studies learn how to talk about yourself in english write out your answers this way it's much easier to find out if you are losing points or or to find out which areas you need to develop for example, if I ask you about, do you want to be famous? You've probably never thought about that before. But if you've written about it before, you've really kind of started to warm up your thinking engine, your your thinking mind, and you'll have an answer much readily available. You you can just recall what you wrote about a few weeks ago, rather than just starting from zero. Next one why did you choose this kind of work well i chose to be an english tutor because i was initially struggling finding work um in valencia in spain however there was a lot of demand for english tutors and being a native english uh, person from england um, work was readily available fortunately i grew to love it there we go it's probably a little bit too long but i extended it for this podcast <laughs> because it drives me mad when a lot of students ask me are you a native english speaker anyway um next question what was your dream job when you were a child if i remember correctly if i remember correctly did you hear that beautiful collocation if i remember correctly I used to want to be a cartoonist. I think I went through a phase where I was obsessed with drawing caricatures. However, that kind of drifted away as I got older. Have you changed your mind since then? Well, I th think what happened was I was really interested in drawing and cartoons. Then that kind of went into developed into design but then i went traveling and i kind of changed my mind and i went into a different line of work there we go i mean i'm just given an honest answer um fortunately i have kind of reviewed my career decisions in the past so like as i was saying before it is information readily available Moving on, as I said before, if you can write out your answers for these, it becomes so much easier when uh, you're in the test because you can, you've written out your answers. Ideally, you've gone back and you've looked at maybe the, the certain words that you've repeated and you've upgraded them. Ideally, you've gotten feedback. Ideally, you've recorded yourself and you've figured out, okay, I'm speaking too fast or I say um mm, and ah too often or mm, I need to work on my pronunciation so there's lots of different ways we can improve moving on questions about celebrities or being famous do you want to be a star absolutely not I think becoming world famous would be a nightmare for me I'm rather private and I would hate all that attention. 
Have you ever met celebrities or pop stars in person? If I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, I saw Prince Charles once. We were in the same room because at university I worked as a waiter and I was at an waitering at an official event in the city centre in Manchester and Prince Charles turned up. So yes I have. What pop stars do you like? Mm, this is kind of difficult to be honest because I don't really follow that much the pop culture um, but the old pop stars I like possibly the Beatles, Freddie Mercury um, more along the lines of the classic ones rather than the Justin Bieber's and uh, Nicki Minaj and all of that. Who is your favourite celebrity? I guess I, I don't really have a favourite but I do admire Ronaldo a lot because when I was younger he used to get a lot of hate um, especially during some some of the tournaments however he just keeps on moving forward and also I remember one clip where a young Japanese or Korean footballer asked for he asked him a question in English and all the reporters laughed and then Ronaldo defended the um, Japanese kid for saying hey he's trying don't laugh at him and then that moment instantly changed my opinion of Ronaldo uh, so yeah I guess I could say he's, I wouldn't say he's my favorite but I do admire him there we go just a little anecdote maybe a little bit too long but it's probably better to be you know speaking more than uh, speaking less last question how do celebrities influence their fans in your country as I said, I don't really follow that many celebrities, so it's a bit it's it's a difficult question for me to answer. However, I I did read an article about Elon Musk just talking about Bitcoin and then I think all his fans went out and bought Bitcoin. However, I'm not entirely sure about that, so I think he talked about it on Twitter, so maybe via social media. There we go. So as I said before, you do not need to talk at length here. A couple of sentences. Talk um, as naturally as possible. I know it's easier said than done, but you can find quite a few fillers out there. If I remember correctly, uh, to be honest, well, I've never really thought about it, however, and these are copy-paste, they can get you started, and once you get started, it's easier to carry on. So, as I said, I think in my mind, from working with lots of students over the time, over time, there's some students that have an explosion of ideas, some students really struggle and their mind goes blank. In both cases, slowing down, adding pauses to what you're saying, thinking in images, and some solid preparation, as we said, like writing out your answers, um, researching yourself, and you know, finding out how to how to talk about yourself and your fate and your dislikes and your likes, and possibly anecdotes. And obviously recording yourself and getting some feedback all of these little techniques will help you on the day of the exam now if you're still wanting to improve and if you're still struggling with this then I recommend you try our feedback service um, all you have to do is go to IELTSpodcast.com and you'll see that we have some special speaking packs available what happens is we give you some questions 
you record your answers you send them in and we give you some feedback we say okay you need to work on your pronunciation here's what you need to do or you need to work on your grammatical accuracy try answer these questions using these tenses and we've been getting some great results from that uh, so if you're interested in that, go over to IELTSpodcast.com. You can sign up there and we have a special offer. That's it from me. Have a great day. Keep moving forward. And if you are in lockdown, try and make the most of it. We are in lockdown where I am at the moment. It's not a bundle of fun, I can admit. Um, but what are we going to do? Well, the first lockdown... I kind of, um, I was a little bit down, but this one I've really taken to it. I've up, up to my standards. I'm going running most days and I'm learning a new, a new language. And I think that's the best we can do. So we're almost out of it. Let's just keep moving forward. Have a great day and thank you for listening and good luck with your IELTS preparation. IELTSpodcast.com.